So this is sort of a continuation of my unnecessarily long tutorial on custom properties. And today we're going to try to do something similar, which is produce the material stack in Blender. And uh, let's jump in so I can show you the problem real quick. So this is a good example of what we'll be trying to do here. Imagine you have a set of very similar objects in terms of geometry. In fact, they can be exactly the same. The only difference is the image texture. So what we'll be trying to do here is we'll be creating one material and we'll be trying to incorporate several image textures into this one material and uh, try to tell Blender that we want this can to have this image texture and this can to have this image texture. So it's not going to be random. It's going to be by design. Like we are going to decide which one of these soda cans have which texture. Uh, we're not going to model soda cans, of course, we're going to use regular planes for demonstration purposes. So let's do just that. Let me, let me delete all this crap and let me split my window because we'll be primarily working in the shader editor. And let's add a plane, look at it from the top. Let's make several duplicates. I think four is fine. Zoom in go to material preview. Okay, that's fine. Let's create a new material and uh, immediately link this to all the other objects. Yeah, let's add some image textures. And I have some textures that I have prepared in advance for this tutorial, some beautiful, beautiful textures. Let me just show you. Uh, let's uncheck detect sequences because it's not a sequence. This is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. Okay, perfect. And let's look at the texture itself. Okay, this one is a zero, this is a one, this is two, this is three. Very informative. So if you want to mix several color outputs in Blender, you just use the mix color node, you know, mix these together. And right off the bat, you can see that it's something in between zero and one, which is expected. Of course, if we slide the factor all the way to zero, it's the first input. If we slide it all the way to one, it's the second input makes sense. So how do we make these two, for example, let's say this is was this will be zero and this will be one, how do we make these understand which one of these textures we want them to have? Well, we have this magical property right here in the object properties under relations, you have this guy that's called pass index, which is just an integer, which is set to zero by default for every object you create. And uh, I haven't really seen anyone use it anywhere for anything. But for our case, it's super useful. So let me show you how this works. So it's called pass index, but in the shader editor, you can find it under the object info node, it's called the object index, it's the same thing. So right now, as you can see, if I scroll through my planes over here, they all have a, an index of zero, but we can set this one to one, for example, okay. And if we plug this object index into the factor, well, now you can see that this is zero because it has a pass index of zero. And this is one because it has a one you don't need this principle actually. So let's add another mix node here. Well, it's going to mix the result of the first mixing with the second texture, which will have an index of two. Yeah, is that right? So this has a one, zero, one, two. Yeah, that's right. And uh, right now, the factor is set to one. So obviously, they all inherit this texture uh, as their image. And uh, so yeah, how do we sort of map this object index to a range of values, probably see where I'm going with this, to fit into this zero to one range, a lot of map and range words here. So let's just go ahead and use a map range node. And uh, we'll set the from min to one from max to two from min is the result of this mixing and from two is well, the index of two. I mean, it may not make a lot of sense if you haven't used the map range node before. But just trust me, it works. Yeah. Okay, you can see over here that this has an index of zero. And it gets the first image Well, the zeroth image. This is a one, this is a two. Okay, so let's just add another mix and finish this off. Okay, mix it like this, add another map range and um, set the from min to two and from max to three. And again, two min to max is set to zero and one, which is exactly what we need. 
Okay, yeah, we forgot to set the pass index to three. Yeah, this is basically how it works. And you can change the pass index over here and it inherits the correct image texture that is assigned through this. Well, it's not a very complicated node tree, but it could get complicated. In fact, let me show you exactly how complicated it can get because, you know, we haven't incorporated the alpha values, for example, which is obviously something you might need if you're using transparent PNG textures. So yeah, I have this uh, material that I've prepared in advance. As you can see right now, it doesn't look very scary because it's just the principle and the material output here. But if we zoom out, you can see that it's quite large. But it's, uh, it's nothing fancy, really. It's just, you know, a lot of map ranges and a lot of, and a lot of mixed nodes. And that's it. That's, uh, that's all it, it is. It's 25 textures, which is, I think, more than you will ever need for anything. But you know, just in case I created this monstrosity and it will be available somewhere for free, I will leave the link in the description, obviously. I don't know, Gumroad or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, that's it for today. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys find it useful. See ya.